In this video, we characterize the power objects in the category of sets in terms of the universal mapping property it enjoys. Consider a set Y consisting of fictitious political candidates Tanders, Slinton, Bruce, and Crump, and a set X consisting of the states New Hampshire, Iowa, and New York. The product of X and Y gives us ordered pairs consisting of a state and a politician. Suppose we are interested in the subset of the product of X and Y, which gives us those pairs such that in state X, candidate Y spent more than $1 million campaigning there. Those elements are given in pink, and the subset they describe is given by an inclusion map. This will be our generic structure, a subset of a product followed by the projection. If we replace Y by the power set of X, which can be given by a three-digit binary number between 0 and 7, where the 1's place signifies whether New Hampshire is in the subset, the 2's place whether Iowa is in the subset, and the 4's place whether New York is in the subset. The membership relation describes a subset of the product of X and the power set of X. For example, since the binary member corresponding to 3 is 0, 1, 1, the fiber over 3 has the elements corresponding to the 1's digit and the 2's digit in the subset described by the membership relation. The structure on the left determines a unique map, phi, from y to the power set of x, which assigns an element in y to the corresponding binary number described by the fiber. So for example, phi maps Tanders to 6, since Tanders spent more than $1 million in Iowa and New York, but not in New Hampshire. In other words, the patterns of pink and white dots above Tanders corresponds precisely to the pattern of pink and white dots in the fiber above 6 in the power set of X. So we see that each fiber above elements of Y determines a subset of X, and phi is uniquely determined by it. This is the same as saying that the membership relation is a terminal such structure, i.e., each subset of the product of X and Y uniquely determines a morphism phi such that the morphisms x cross phi and its restriction to the subset makes the two squares above commute. More in fact is true. Note that the pair SC is in the relation R if and only if S is in phi C. Or categorically, R is the pullback of the membership relation along x cross phi. We use this observation to define power objects in a finitely complete category E. Let E be a finitely complete category we say that the inclusion of epsilon sub x in x cross px is a power object of x in E, provided that for each subobject R of the product of x and y, there is a unique morphism phi from y to px such that the following diagram commutes and the upper square is a pullback. Then we can prove that there are equivalent definitions of a power object one by giving relations. Recall that an arrow with a line through it, r from y to x, means r is a subobject of the product of x and y. So we may say an object px is a power object of x if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between relations from y to x and morphisms from y to px natural in y. We can also define power objects in terms of representable presheaves. We say epsilon sub x px is a power object of x provided the following presheaf is representable with universal element epsilon sub x px, i.e. the identity on px in E is taken to epsilon sub x under the natural isomorphism.